Hello guys, uh, welcome to Sports Psychology Screencast um, on Groups and Teams. Okay, so last lesson we looked at um, nature of a group and then we also had a quick look at um, Steiner's model of group productivity. Now today's focus is going to be on um, two things. Firstly, we're going to look at factors affecting the development and formation of a key of team. Then we're going to look at factors that affect the participation within a team. Now, there's two they're very similar objectives, but they need different answers. So we'll start off then uh, looking at this. Now, this used to be called, the old specification, we'll call it factors affecting cohesion. But this one requires you to do the following. So basically, uh, a theorist called Caron, C-A-R-R-O-N, um, came up with this kind of uh, cohesion model and basically what they said was you know the factors that affect the development and formation of a case of tea are split into four categories now the four categories are leadership individual team and situational so they're categories from there what you need is you need to be able to kind of give examples or kind of points from within those categories so I will go through those kind of what they mean now. So the first factor affecting uh, development formation is leadership. So basically what this means, this is something you'll need in, if the style adopted by the leader is preferred by the group members, this is uh, that is more likely to be a cohesive team. For example, you know, you might have a group of young netballers, year seven, very timid. Therefore, if they uh, if the style of the leader is democratic which means um, you know they allow the students to make decisions they're not shouting at them all the time there's more chance that team are going to be cohesive okay another factor oh sorry like a category are individual factors now individual factors refer to individual kind of differences that make each person unique so everyone has different levels of motivation so an example of an individual factor that um, can increase or decrease cohesion in a team is motivation. So we've talked about this kind of concept of motivation here. So how would you explain that? So um, if an individual uh, is not motivated within a team, e.g. they're a social loafer, this can lead to poor team cohesion. However, if all players are motivated, this will lead to good cohesion. Now within team, there are certain team factors that affect cohesion. So in order to for, uh, formulate a, an effective team, if the team share a common goal, then they're more likely to be cohesive. So, for example, if a team goal is to uh, win the league, if a team goal is to play a possession type game, say in football, that is more likely, if they're all working towards that shared goal, they're, they're more likely to be cohesive. Also, and this is a key one, I think all of us have probably been in teams where you've been successful in the past. So, if you've achieved shared past success, as a team, there is more likely that you'll be cohesive and work towards the same goal. Okay, then finally, if you have a group identity, e.g., we use this kind of identity thing before. If a team has an identity, e.g., your team kind of wears the same kit um, and you have a certain identity within that, you're more likely to be cohesive. The final one is situational factors. So if you have a quick look on here. Now situational factors refer to the situation in which a team is in that can kind of increase or decrease the cohesion. So for example, if the size of a group is small, there's more likely that they, they will be cohesive. For example, if you look at a basketball team, there's five players, there's more chance that they will be cohesive due to the fact that there are less players. However, you add that to a rugby team where there's 15 players and you have to join together four, four you know, kind of eight forwards and then you've got the rest backs. That can cause problems. And that's due to kind of that instance that, uh, that we talked about before, the ring of an effect. The other thing that can, situation that can affect cohesion are things such as the environment. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that kind of sometimes, uh, I think this is certainly, you might have experienced this. When you go into a hostile environment, for example, you know, you, you've watched kind of any football fixtures in the past where teams go to notoriously hostile grounds such as like uh, Turkey, Galatasaray, and they'd have banners on there, welcome to Hal, and you know, they'd be throwing stones and bricks at the, at the coach. When you go to an environment like that where it's very hostile, that often really brings teams closer together and they think, you know, we're going to work together, we have to work together because all of the crowd are against us, okay? So the environment, if a hostile environment, can often lead to an increase in team cohesion. Okay, so these are all factors affecting the development or formation of a cohesive team. So what I would say to you, that is your heading 
that's the exam question. These are the categories, but from within the categories, we've got the style preferred here. This has one we're going to use motivation. I need you to make sure you've got three separate points in your Cornell notes for here, and then also two for here. This could be a six mark question, therefore four categories are not enough. All right, so going on from there, obviously I've just kind of put that there, which we'll lose in the lesson tomorrow. The other objective we're going to look at for tomorrow's lesson is looking at factors affecting participation in a group of team. So what is it that allows a team to have coordinated participation when they play together? So we've kind of looked at this a little bit more and what you will realise is these strategies or these factors that affect participation in a group or team are basically identical that, to the strategies that prevent the ring of an effect. So the ring of an effect is a, as the sort of group size increases, there are increased coordination errors. This objective is saying, okay, so what factors can affect and improve participation in a group? Coordinated participation. So if we have a larger team, how do we avo avoid the ring of an effect? You will remember this. So we use this concept of factors affecting participation in a group of team is going to be team. So we use this word team here to give us our answers. So if I just go through to here, how do we do this? Factors affect participation in a group or team. These are the strategies to promote participation in the team. You set team goals. You rehearse team set plays. You give clear roles. You select team players. You provide team building activities. Remember the word team as you did before for the ring of an effect. So ultimately, you have two key focuses. Factors affecting development or formation of a cohesive team, and then factors, once you're in that team, factors affecting the kind of effective and coordinated participation in a group or team. They're the key bits for that. We will also have a look to links to a balanced, active, healthy lifestyle. We'll cover that in the lesson tomorrow. Okay, can you make good notes on that, please? Thank you.